Good morning, brethren, sisters, and Church of the Living God. And on to those of you who may see this video. Hello. Good morning. Please get yourself a copy of what is known as the Authorized Version of the Scriptures, otherwise called the King James Version. And turn in the Authorized Version of the Scriptures to Psalm 12. To Psalm 12. We're going to read Psalm 12 in its entirety, and we're also going to be looking up um, corresponding verses as we continue in this video. There are many things those um, of you who are not of the Church of the Living God you need to consider. And this is something that the Lord would have me to do for you. And on to my brethren and sisters, Church of the Living God. As I have said to you brethren before, um, there are actually a few who watch these videos who are not of the Church of the Living God. And I'm not talking about the devil coadjutors. I ain't talking about them. But those who are actually curious, who um, are seeking. I know this for certain. And um, we have to understand too, brethren, that the hour is late, and the redemption of the purchase possession draweth nigh. It could come at any moment. Hence, be patient. For these things that we will go over will be milk unto ye, church of the living God. But you have to remember, the doors are not closed. Hence, You understand what I'm saying. Now, Psalm 12. I'm using two sets of scriptures, two authorized versions of the scriptures. Going to be a bit of an expository video here, but we're going to consider some things. Go to the very first verse, and we're going to read the very first verse, uh, beginning at the first verse, okay? Psalm 12. Help, Lord. For the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. The godly man. What is godly man? For us today, someone who is godly is one who is born again, saved, converted of the church of the living God. And a godly man is someone who aligns their lives to the scriptures, okay? Uh, it saith in the New Testament, in the Pauline epistles, written by Paul the Apostle, that those who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer, shall, shall suffer persecution. If you're living godly, who is going to persecute you? The devil and his angels, his ministers. Who are the devil's ministers? That'd be the Roman Catholic Church. Rome. Catholicism. The Jesuit order. But it says here, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Many claim to be of the church of the living God. And then when things start going haywire out there because of what Roman Catholicism Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, through her army, the Jesuit order, has done. Many will claim to be Christians. But when thorns and snares rise up because of what Catholicism, the Jesuits are doing out there, their true colors be shown. That it's usually up here for them and not here. Go to 1 Kings now, chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. This, we're going to be briefly looking at 
something in regards to the prophet Elijah, who himself will be coming back during the time of Jacob's trouble. It will be Elijah and Moses who will be the two witnesses during the time of Jacob's trouble. And you got to remember in 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 Kings chapter 18, the Lord through Elisha, the, pri the prophet, worked a mighty work. Worked a mighty work. Exposed the prophets of Baal for what they were. False. He even slew many of the prophets of Baal. He called fire down from heaven on a sacrifice, on an altar made with stones. Doused it with water, which was in short supply. And the Lord answered by fire. And the people were like, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. He did an amazing work for the Lord before whom he stood. But after that, by the threatening of a woman, Jezebel, you might have heard of Jezebel. Jezebel in type is likened on to the Catholic, Mystery Babylon, the Great. Because remember, Roman Catholicism refers to herself as a mother. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Their Mary is in fact Semiramis, the Queen of Heaven, which is speak, which is talked about in the book of Jeremiah. Okay? But Elijah did this mighty work for the Lord, but then from threatenings of a woman, Jezebel, he got he done got a scared, see. And this is where we're going to pick up. We are going to read in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 on to verse 18. Follow me along, please. And he came thither unto a cave, and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elisha? And he said, This is Elisha talking unto the Lord. I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. Now, for instruction and righteousness unto you, the church of the living God, it might seem that the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. How often do we of the church of the living God feel that way? That we're the only ones, right? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. Verse 11, And he said, Go forth, and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountain. Rent, tear. Rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle. And went out, and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him, and said, What doest thou here, Elijah?
In verse 14, he reiterates what he said in verse 10, Elijah. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. They. Who's the they? For our instruction in righteousness today, the they is the devil and his uh, angels, his ministers, uh, his church, Roman Catholicism, and his army, the Jesuits. And those who are in league with the Je Jesuits, who want a piece of that action, they're called coadjutors. They are not openly Jesuits, but they work with and for the Jesuit order. There are a lot of those people about. Now, Elijah was a scared because of Jezebel, the threatenings of a woman. Mystery Babylon the Great. Okay? For instruction and righteousness. Are you being threatened by Roman Catholicism? <laughs> Are you being sent threats? I feel like sometimes that it's just us. But what said the scriptures? Verse 15, And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. Okay. Remember, Elijah was a little scared. Okay. A little scared. But the Lord comforted him. And said, and verse 15, he's reiterating unto Elijah, Finish the work. One two I have called thee. Okay. Verse 16. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mola, Mahola, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. So see, in verses 15 and 16, the Lord is reminding Elijah, you have a job to do. Take care of this and anoint the other two. I'll follow in your stead. Okay? Unto whom, now for our instruction in righteousness, brethren, Church of the Living God. And for you lost people out there, you need to remember this. See, those of us who are of the Church of the Living God, we want to live according to what the Scriptures say for us today. That's why we look so strange unto you. That's why um, many refer to us as troublemakers, because we, we live by a standard, not of the world. Not from Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Roman Catholicism. Okay? See, our standard is different. Their standard is the tradition given to them by their fathers. Okay? Ours is the authorized version of the scriptures. That's why we seem so different to you. Because we are. Why is that? Because we are of the church of the living God. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, dwells within us. The Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit, see. And he will guide us into all truth. And he will guide us into the scriptures. But see, we, as the church of the living God, have something to do. To live according to this book, the scriptures, so that you who are going to be left behind in the hands of these monsters will remember. Verse 17. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. So see, Elijah is setting these people up for judgment testimony to judge the way we of the church of the living God handle the days today is exactly that a judgment unto you who are lost 
And verse 18. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. See, Elijah thought it was just him. But he, but he wasn't. Sometimes we can feel all alone, but we're never alone. Not really. Like I've said before, having the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within you, that makes a difference. It ought to. But now, go to Psalm 11. Okay? Check this out. Psalm 12, verse 1. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Look at Psalm 11, verses 1 under verse 4. Now remember how we saw in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18, about how the Lord uh, reserved for him or left in Israel 7,000 uh, that did not bow the knee to Baal? Psalm 11, verses 1 under verse 4. And the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privily shoot at the upright and heart. When the son of perdition is released by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, he has, um, he has uh, a crown and he's going forth conquering and to conquer and he's armed with a bow. Okay? The son of perdition. That man of sin. The abomination that maketh desolate. Inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? Verse 3 in Psalm 11. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The foundations be destroyed. What can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. Now today, the temple of God are ye, those of us who are saved, born again, converted. Okay? God does not live in temples made with hands, church buildings. Okay? We, those of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, we have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that spirit dwelling within us. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, the temple of the Lord, not buildings, okay? Okay? And his eyelids, his eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. If the foundations be destroyed. Uh, very quickly, go now to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I have to, I have to say this. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, not 2. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 3. <clears throat> All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the foundation on which all things are laid. Not Peter. Which, that will be being addressed in a video coming, Lord willing, tomorrow. Not in this video. I'm going to be addressing that specifically in another video. Okay? But the foundation that is laid is Jesus Christ, not Peter. Okay? The foundation is our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, But see, there are those out there who want to destroy the foundations, and they can't. That is what Mystery Babylon is all about. They want to destroy the foundations. They cannot destroy God the Father, um, nor they can they destroy his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay, But what they can do is copy it, imitate it. Put out Bibles 
that pervert it, counterfeit it, you know? And see, you ask me, I believe that the authorized version of the scriptures is perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration. I tell you that there is a perfect word of God on earth, and it is the authorized version of the scriptures. Perfect. Doesn't need to be changed. Okay? And you have to remember, Amos chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 12. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send, a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. And see, yea, hath God said, that's Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, is what is known as textual criticism today. And that comes from Roman Catholicism, the Jesuit order. Okay? They, the Jesuits, Roman Catholicism, hate this book. They hate this book. And they will do many things to try to destroy the foundation and to get the faithful to question. Here's one of the resources I'm going to be using in this video. Alberto, the comic testimony of Alberto Rivera. Okay? I'm going to be reading page 13 here, where the picture of the um, Pope is. I'm going to be reading from here, here. Okay? Pause that and read it if you can, if you want to. Okay? And I'm also going to be reading this page, okay? This page right here, okay? If you can, pause it and read it. Let me get my face out of the way. The foundations be destroyed. See, that's what Catholicism wants to do. They are replacement theology. That's why they adhere themselves unto Peter. Because Peter was the apostle unto the circumcision, the Jews. And Roman Catholicism is replacement theology. They believe and they want you to believe that they have replaced the Jew. They say they are Jews and they are not. Meaning they've replaced the Jew. Okay? But check this out. The Pope is supposed to be the ruler of the world. This point was made clear by Augustine, a Roman Catholic writer, around 720 A.D. In the original Latin version of his book, The City of God, newer versions have removed this information to keep it from the public. He, the Pope, is the Son, S-U-N, ruler of the universe, the moon, the governments of the earth, reflects his glory. The earth is all the people who bow down before him. In Revelation chapter 17, the waters in Revelation chapter 17 are likened unto people. Okay? And if you think that the Jewish people are the ones who rule everything today, you're sadly mistaken. You're, you're falling for the lies of Roman Catholicism. It's the Jesuits. It's Roman Catholicism that rules the world, dear friend. And guess what? If you're Catholic, you're not saved. If you're a Catholic, you're not saved because your faith is in a system, not on the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Obviously. You're not saved. There is no such thing as a saved Catholic. Catholic, you can get saved. But See, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is not going to leave you in a system that is destined to be destroyed by himself. You understand? And what is being promulgated out there today, dear people, is Catholicism.
He said, in essence, that God granted the Pope the divine right as Jesus Christ on earth to secretly control the population in every country through education, politics, economics, and military might. That is the religion of Catholicism. My next great shock happened in school. I was 16 years old. The teacher was talking about Peter being the first pope. And like I said, I'm gonna, I've already done a video about uh, Peter not being the first pope. Okay, I've already done that, but uh, I'm gonna get into another aspect of this, Lord willing, tomorrow because I was asked to. So that's coming, okay? I asked a question that almost destroyed me. Stand up, Alberto, what did you say? Little did I know, I had challenged the Pope himself. To prove that the Apostle Peter was the first Pope, the teacher said that Shimon Peter was the rock on which the Roman Catholic Church was built. And that is what Catholics teach. Okay? Alberto Rivera, he asked, he asked this guy, how could Peter be the rock on which the Church was built? And the Jesuit teacher says, because it was clearly proved in the old Aramaic Bible, which no longer exists. Now think about that. Okay, hold up. You got guys out there who say only the originals are inspired. You know, the original Greek and the original Hebrew, which don't exist because they wore out with use. Okay? Okay. And the ones that all the Bibles are based off of are manuscripts that are in the custody of the Jesuit order, Roman Catholicism. Okay? But you see that? Oh, you don't see that if you, you paused it and read it on uh, when, you, when I hold, held it up. It says, because it was clearly proved in the old Aramaic Bible, which no longer exists, uh, you have to take their word. You can't. You, you don't have a perfect standard that you can check them out on, see. Then Alberto says, I don't understand. From what you told us in the Latin and Greek, it says Shimon means sand and Peter means a little stone. Isn't Jesus the rock? I didn't give you permission to ask questions, Alberto. Then Alberto says, please let me go on, I beg you. Jesus said, on this rock I will build my church. So Peter could never be that rock because right after that, Jesus calls Peter Satan, Matthew 16, 23. Yes. And then this Jesuit guy freaks out. Get out, stay out of my class, you are out of order. You are talking like a heretic, a communist. You wait outside. And it has a little note here. Anyone who doesn't go along with the Pope or the teaching of the Roman Catholic institution is a heretic. Not with the scriptures, but with the Church of Rome. I'm a heretic. According to Roman Catholicism. Oh, you, you're going to love that little bit that I just gave you, aren't you? You're going to cut that up and have that play over and over. Go, go right ahead. Go right ahead. These are the people who you work for. Then it says, two hours later, two hours later, I didn't bring you into my office for something you did wrong, but because what you said was very dangerous. Alberto says to this priest guy, what did I do? Why did you call me those names? I had to protect myself, even though I agree with what you said. I could never let my students know what I truly believe. I don't understand, Father. If I reported you to the rector, you would be punished. What you did was very, very dangerous. Someday you will find that there are many things you must never speak about. You have been warned. Now go. And right over here, right over here, see that? Look at that.
We were not allowed to read Bibles. Only the instructors used them. A younger student showed, shoved a New Testament into my hands. What is this? It's a matter of life and death, Alberto. Read it. I've got to go. Goodbye. I was afraid. I didn't have the official Roman Catholic seal of approval on the first page. I tried to throw it away. If I were caught reading it, they would have accused me of heresy. So I hid it. Ah, yes. See, the Catholic priests don't want, the Catholics don't want you reading the authorized version of the scriptures. Because in the epistle, uh, epistle dedicatory, it talks about popish persons. But what they will do, they will counterfeit it and give you a, a, a new American Bible. The Dewey Creams, which came before the authorized version, written by Jesuits, okay? They will give you the Dewey Reams, the New American Bible, the Revised Standard Version, which is uh, traced back to Westcott and Horton, 1881. Okay, the NIV, the New American Standard, which is uh, Mason John MacArthur and his little yes boy, uh, Justin Peters, preferred translation. Okay, the ESV, so on, the non-King James. See, they don't mind that you read a Bible, but... They don't, they can't have you reading the scriptures. See, they're trying to destroy the foundations. They can't. They, you Catholics, you cannot get rid of the authorized version. You know that. But see, the hour is late. People are so scared, so driven down by all of this that the mother of harlots has done. And they're seeking to and fro but can't find it. But if a version will be given them, let's see. Let's see. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. And let's read Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. One verse. Proverbs 20, one verse. Verse 6, if I can get there. <laughs> Proverbs 20, verse 6. Proverbs 20. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among men. Verse 6 in Proverbs chapter 20. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Like the Jesuit priest, the Catholic their own goodness because they're being saved by what they do, by keeping the sacraments, by adhering to the system, by eating the sun shape, S-U-N, shape, bale cookie. They're all about the flesh. Catholicism is all about the flesh. And all her daughters is about the flesh. Okay? But they will proclaim their own goodness. But a faithful man who can find Seems a little odd nowadays, doesn't it? Let's continue in Psalm 12. They speak vanity. Every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Verses 21 on to verse 23. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. They speak vanity. Everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. Flattering lips. Flattery. Yeah, like someone had been doing to me late, uh, lately. Flat, trying to flatter me. You, 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 you didn't think I knew that, did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But see, on the outward, they seem so pious, so sweet, so righteous, right? His words were softer than oil, 
yet were they drawn swords. Verse 22 in Psalm 55. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. The ultimate end of the coadjutor, the Jesuit, Roman Catholicism, is destruction. They are bloody and deceitful men. Now, Proverbs 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Verses 16 on to verse 19. Proverbs chapter 6. Verses 16 on to verse 19. These six things... Doth the Lord hate? Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. A lying tongue. And hands that shed innocent blood. A proud look. These Jesuits are proud of what they have done. They are proud in the strength of their numbers, their kingdom that they are building for their father, Satan. A lying tongue. The ultimate of scripture twister is the Catholic, because their father is Satan. Yea, hath God said. They go, they, they, uh, Jesuits have infiltrated everything. Okay? People go to their cemetery schools, seminary schools, and the first thing they learn is textual criticism, and they all have one enemy in common. The authorized version of the scriptures. Have you ever noticed that all these fake, or excuse me, all these Bibles out there, they compare themselves to the scriptures, the authorized version? Why is that? Because this is the real deal, see. This is the real deal. Anything else is a Bible. You don't have an authorized version of the scriptures. You do not have what God said. Verse 18, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, as the Jesuit wants to rule the world by the volition of a single man, that man of sin, the son of perdition, the abomination that maketh desolate, inaccurate, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? Feet that be swift to running to mischief. If you, uh, if you can get your hands on this, okay, uh, the testimony of Alberto Rivero, Rivera, they, uh, the Jesuits infiltrate. That's what they do. They can be a preacher, a teacher. They could be a shoe salesman. They could be a gas station attendant. It's no deed is too small for the greater glory of God unto the Jesuit. Okay? And they're there for mischief to get everyone to go back under the headship of Roman Catholicism. And when you got somebody who's calling themselves a Christian and avoiding talking about connecting the I and T kind of thing, you know, uh, connecting the dots of pointing to Satan and the use of his church, Roman Catholicism, and his army, the Jesuits, there are some out there who will talk about, you know, Catholicism, but they won't mention Satan. There are those that mention Satan, but yet won't talk about Catholicism. Perfect example about that one, Phil Robertson. Phil Robertson. Some of these Jesuit coadjutors. Talk about the Jesuits, their own order. I won't get into big detail. They all like to leave out Satan. Or deflect. And call those of us who are of his body, the church of the living God, the devils, while they themselves are the devils. Call the enemy what you are and always speak the opposite of the truth. Vladimir Lenin said that. That's what they do. Verse 19 again. Oh no. Verse 18. Excuse me. 
and heart that deviseth wicked imagination, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. That sounds pretty good for a definition of a Jesuit, doesn't it to you? I think so. I think so very much. <laughs> and now go to Proverbs chapter 23. One verse. Verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, as he thinketh in his heart, I will be like the Most High. That, that's Lucifer, Satan. He wants to be God. So he imitates, he tries to imitate, counterfeit, and replace God. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, those of you who call yourselves atheists, you're not an atheist. You do believe in a God, the one that you're looking at in the mirror. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Oh, I've encountered a lot of very generous people. Yes, of course. But is their heart with thee? Yes. That's the thing you have to wonder sometimes. Sometimes. You have to be on your guard about these things, brother, sister. And those of you who are lost, oh my goodness. You need to take heed to what's being said to you right now, okay? And now, go to James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James is what is known as a time of Jacob's trouble epistle. It will be extraordinarily pertinent for the time of Jacob's trouble, which people like to tell you is the great tribulation. It's not. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. It's for the Jews, not the purification of the church. See, that's what Roman Catholicism tries to tell you because they are replacement theology. They say they are Jews and they are not, see? Okay? But the book of James, let's read very first, uh, very first verse in James, okay? James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. So right away, that first verse tells you unto whom this particular book is written unto, the 12 tribes, okay? The 12 tribes are not in their distinction today, as they will be during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Okay? But here in verse 2, back in Psalm 12, they speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips, with a double heart do they speak. James chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Well, you might be saying, well, hey, doesn't it say a double heart do they speak? And that says double-minded? A divided heart. A divided mind. Let me give you a good example of this. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And here is where, for us, the Church of the Living God, sanctification is very important for us today to adhere our lives onto the Scriptures. And for those of you who are lost, um, not conforming to what's going on out there, because what is going on out there comes from Satan, Roman Catholicism, at the hands of the Jesuit order. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 20 on to verse 22. See, there's no shade of gray like the Jesuits, Roman Catholicism, like to say that there is. Yea, hath God said. There's no shade of gray. It's black and white. Okay? There's no shade of gray. 
when it comes to the truth, the truth of the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 21 to verse 22. But I say, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. The perfectly round, sun-shaped cookie, that poison wine that they drink, the statutes of Rome, they're sacrificing unto devils. The devil. Not to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. They sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. All things are lawful for you, sure. Oh, but they're not all expedient. What does that mean? Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? See, you try to live both sides of the fence like Solomon did. King Solomon, who was greatly blessed of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He was given many things, wisdom and riches, things he didn't ask for at first. But he loved women, see. He was the ultimate player, if you will. Okay? And because he loved many strange women, not of his kindred, the Jew, but he went outside of that, took his heart away because he built uh, uh, little G gods for all his wives. See? And that's what Roman Catholicism does. They get you away from the truth, what the yea hath God said, and then they send their moral theologian scholars, the Jesuit scholars, in their cemetery schools, training a generation of Christians that don't have a perfect standard. Yea hath God said. But see, you can't eat at the Lord's table and at the table of devils. Because what if you do that, okay, you're going to provoke the Lord to jealousy. You can't have you can't have one foot on this side and the other on that side. It's either or. You can't play it safe. There's no shade of gray when it comes to this. You're either saved or you're lost. There's no option C. There's no option C. Back to Psalm 12. They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor. With flattering lips and a double heart do they speak. Flattering lips. Smooth things. Prophesying deceits. You're not a bad person. You can save yourself by adhering to a system. You're saved by your own belief, not what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you. No. See, they flatter. Puffing up your flesh. Verses 3 and 4. Who have said, with our tongue will we prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? See, when the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit that dwells within you, He will give you things to say. And when you mess up, you get chastened for that. That is why when someone has a foul mouth and continually cusses and swears, that's, that's something to be taken note of, that individual. Uh, now, like I've said before, um, accidents happen. I've said this to many people before. There was a time a while ago where I took, I was moving a couch and I decided to drop a couch on my toe. And it bludgeoned my toe, blood spit all over the place, and I used a profane word. And my toe was all bloody, and I was like, Ooh! I was more 
saddened and hurt at the, at the fact that I cussed and swore than the fact that my toe, my big toe, was bludgeoning and bleeding all over the place. Okay? Things like that. You know, you might be hammering something and, ah, you know, as the church of the living God. Um, that, that does happen. It can happen. But see, those of us of the church of the living God, okay, those who are saved, born again, converted, um, we immediately say, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. And we seek not to continue in it. That's why it's very telling when someone who can't control their own temper and they get really angry and start spouting off profane words, swear words. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, the way you speak usually is one of the first things that's dealt with by our Lord Jesus Christ living within you. Okay? The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things who have said with our tongue will we prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Verse 5. Oh no, uh, excuse me. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Now go back to Psalm 11. Psalm 11, or Psalm, uh, go to Psalm 10. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Psalm 10. Psalm 10, verses 1 under verse 11 in Psalm 10. Okay? The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things, who have said, with our tongue will we prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Psalm 10, verses 1 under verse 11. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire. And blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Woe unto men when they will speak well of you. For so did they of, their, the, of the false prophets. If you're one of the boys, you got to wonder whether or not you're one of the church of the living God. See what I'm saying? The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, his outward appearance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. No, because they're centered on flesh. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. I've seen that in these devils myself. These coadjutors, hey, they don't care. They're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. They are as natural brute beasts, unregenerate. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. Those poor saints, us poor saints, waiting for the redemption of the purchased possession. Uh, possession. Thank you, pardon. He lieth and waits secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth to, in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. And see, we are to live according to the scriptures and preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That these who hear the gospel may recover themselves out of the net that Satan has laid for them. That they will be broken and contrite and come to the Lord and believe on him and cry out to him and the Lord save them. See, because Satan as a lion walketh about seeking whom he may be able to devour. 
See? He croucheth and humbleth himself, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. They pretend to be so weak, so humble, so meek. But their inward part is full of raving. They are wolves. They gnaw not the bone to the marrow. They wear a facade. False front. Anyone? That's what that's talking about. He has sent in his heart. God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. Yeah. Yeah. And verse, and now go to Psalm 11, verses 5 on to verse 7. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. God has a soul? Yeah. Spirit, soul, and body. The Godhead. Yes. God has a spirit, the Holy Ghost. God has a soul. God the Father. God has a body. The Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ. Spirit, soul, and body. We are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body. See? Okay? Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. And go now to Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. When you seek the Lord in all things and you give your life for the one who gave everything for you because of what you did to him. You make it, and it's like, Lord, I want to live according to the scriptures. I want to live my life according to what you have said for me. They see you as strange and they attack you for it. Uh, Je uh, Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 18 on to verse 23. Then said they, now remember about Jeremiah, the prophet of the last days, was preaching a very unpopular message unto a people that did not want to hear. Keep that in mind. And then the religious class, for our instruction in righteousness today, that, what does that mean? The Christians the Catholics, the Jesuits, okay? Yeah, um, Catholics are not of the Church of the Living God. They're Christians, but not of the Church of the Living God. There is a difference. Jeremiah 18, 18 on to verse 23. Then said they, come, and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise nor the word from the prophet. Come, and let us smite him with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his words. Notice how it says the prophet, the priest, the wise, or the prophet. The Jesuit priest, they are wise. And the prophets, such as these charismatics, which are basically Catholics, they want to follow their own way onto perdition, people. Hell. Are you falling for it? Give heed to me, O Lord, and hearken to the voice of them that contend with me. Shall evil be recompensed for good? For they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them and to turn away thy wrath from them. Therefore deliver up their children to the famine and pour out their blood by the force of the sword, and let their wives be bereaved of their children, and be widows, and let their men be put to death. Let their young men be slain by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from their houses, when thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them, for they have digged a pit to take me, and have and hid snares for my feet. 
Yet, Lord, thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. Forgive not their iniquity, neither blot out their sin from thy sight. But let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them in the time of thine anger. And now, verse 5 in Psalm 12. For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. Before we get into more scripture on this, think about the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages is the period when Roman Catholicism was in charge. They kept the scriptures from the people. It was only in Latin. And they kept that from the common people. It's called the Dark Ages. And you got Catholics that say, well, we gave you the Bible. <laughs> it's like, okay, if that were true, why did you keep it from the people for so long? Yeah. Because uh, they, they wanted to control the book in order to control the people. And through the Protestant Reformation, yes, God used that to get the scriptures into the hand of him who drove the plow. Because Tyndale said, um... I'll see to it that the person who drives the plow knows more of the scriptures than you do, referring unto the Catholics. And boom, that is obvious as on today. Is it not? Is it not? Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He is God. He is the Father. Prove it to you. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 7. Uh, Psalm 12, verse 5, For the oppression of the poor, for the sign of the needy. Now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety that puffeth at him. Nevertheless, Isaiah 9, verses 1 on to verse 7. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, great light. Now you got to remember, Satan is transformed into an angel of light to, to deceive people. But the true light of men, the light that lighteneth the whole world, is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He is that light of men. You read that in John chapter 1. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. Thou hast multiplied the nations, and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the days of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is, confused, is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Capital W, Wonderful, Capital C, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting, capital F, Father. The Prince of Peace. This is our Lord Jesus Christ. This is talking about, obviously. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. 
Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Beg your pardon, brethren. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> My lips were getting really chapped. Psalm 102. Psalm 102, verses 12 on to verse 22. Psalm 102, verses 12 on to verse 22. But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time has come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones, and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He shall regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from heaven. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth, excuse me, to hear the groaning of the prisoner to lose those that are appointed to death, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem, when the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. Making reference to his second coming, where the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, will rule and reign from Jerusalem as king of the Jews. It's called the kingdom of heaven. Go to Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, verses 1 on to verse 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Psalm 12, verse 5, For the oppression of the poor, for the sign of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. See, we as Gentiles, we were grafted into the tree of the Jew to make the Jew jealous. Okay? God is not done with the Jewish people. Okay? This dispensation, which is called the time of the Gentiles, anyone can get saved, okay? They have to come to the Lord broken on his terms. Broken, contrite, believing on him, and in brokenness, call upon the name of the Lord. You will do that if you are truly broken and contrite. May the Lord save you. The Lord saves you. You don't save yourself by adhering yourself to a system or something that you yourself do, okay? doesn't work that way. That is what Catholicism teaches. That is all that Catholicism teaches. It's all about flesh to Catholicism. See? And now let's read uh, Isaiah 62, verses 1 and verse 4. For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth, and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hephizabah, and 
and thy land Beulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. Talking about the future fulfillment of the Jew during uh, after the time of Jacob's trouble, when the Jew, when their king will come back, making Jerusalem holy, glorious. The king of the Jews is whom our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is. Talking about the future fulfillment of the Jew. But for our instruction in, in righteousness today, salvation is there. You just got to get over yourself and come to him on his terms, broken and contrite. Not uh, according to the terms that Roman Catholicism, the Jesuit order, will have you to. Because, according, because unto them, it's all about you. It's all about your flesh. Now, verses 6 and 7 in Psalm 12. Remember, the foundation is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay, he is the foundation. The foundation cannot be destroyed. This is the word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures. Perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration. Okay? Psalm 12. The words of the Lord are pure words. Pure words. That means that they don't need to be changed or altered. Like what Roman Catholicism does. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Seven times. When you look into this on your own, and I suggest you do, the scriptures went through a process of seven purifications of language. They are not necessarily in this order. Hebrew, Aramaic, Old Syriac. Old Latin, Greek, German, English. The seven purifications that the scripture went through to come to us in its finished, completed, authorized version. Okay? The text of the authorized version traces back to Syria. The text of the Bibles trace back to Alexandria, Egypt. One is from Egypt, one is from Syria. The ones that are from Egypt are what Catholicism uses. And they remove verses and all kinds of stuff. The Catholic manuscripts, Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, that kind of stuff, are what guys like John MacArthur and Justin Peters defend. Yea, hath God said, people. Uh, those are the um, Bibles that guys like Phil Robertson defends. But see, those of us of the Church of the Living God who are truly saved and born again, converted. The Scriptures. The Authorized Version. This is what you need. Okay? His words are pure. They went through a seven purific uh, purification process to arrive at English, the finished product. Now, the authorized version from 1611 went through font changes, spelling changes, capitalization and punctuation changes. The text was not changed. When you have these yea hath God Jesuit uh, trained textual critics saying, well, the King James went to, like MacArthur and all those guys do, uh, they're Jesuit coadjutors themselves. Um, that's what they are referring to, but they don't tell you that. And there are people out there who are so caught up in this, they say, well, certain things aren't in the originals. You have not seen the originals, nor have I. Nor have they. 
And when they say the originals, they're talking about the ones that were actually written by the hand of David, by the hand of Moses, by the hand of Hosea, by the hand of Isaiah. Okay? That's what they're talking about. Those don't exist. And you, and you heard. That's an argument that they use. The Jesuits. It's like, oh, it was in the originals. They don't exist. But since I've been trained, I know how to tell it to you. Whereas us, the Church of the Living God, no, we believe what God has said, what he has preserved. What do you mean preserved? Thou shalt keep them, verse 7 in Psalm 12. Thou shalt keep them. Now see, Bibles will mess this up. Uh, for example, the NIV says, Thou shalt keep us. No, it's them. What is the them? The words of the Lord are pure words. The them is the words. Okay? Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. We have a promise that the Lord is going to preserve his word forever. Now see, the Jesuits, I'm going to quote out of this again, uh, will have you to believe that, yes, sure, God has preserved his word in a whole mishmash of everything that you need their training to decipher what God has said. So somewhere between the NIV and all the way on to the message, Somewhere in there is what God really said, but you don't know because you got to go to the cemetery schools to be trained by Jesuits on how to read the Greek and blah, 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 blah. <coughs> and they say to us, <coughs> excuse me, who adhere to the authorized version of the scriptures, it's like, well, you say that they have to read, learn English. Right back at you. You say that they have to learn Greek and Hebrew. This is the finished product. You take the authorized version and you use this to translate in other tongues. You don't go back to the Greek. They serve their purpose to bring us this. See? But that's not what the Jesuit teaches, is it? No. But when it comes to the preserving of God's word, there are actually several we can go to, but let's go to Psalm 19. Psalm 19, verses 7 on to verse 14. <coughs> Psalm 19, verse 7, under verse 14. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Where is the testimony of the Lord? The authorized version of the scripture. <coughs> the testimonies of our Lord are here. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Again, where do you find that? In the authorized version of the scriptures. The Catholics take out one of the commandments about the idols, the second commandment. And I will have you know in Romans, go there, in Romans chapter 13, the, the Bibles take out one of the commandments that we have for us today in the time of the Gentiles. You. You got an NIV? You got one of those New American Standards and ESV? Huh? Uh, you got one of them? What about the nitwit living in the trash? You know, the NLT? Huh? You got a mess. Go to Romans chapter 13. Verse 9. Okay? You, 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 yeah, I'm not talking to the Church of the Living God on this. You got one of these Bibles, right? Not the Scriptures? Okay. Follow me along in your Bible while I read the Scripture. Tell me if you can spot a difference. There are commandments for us to follow today. One of them is not the Sabbath. Because that was for a sign for the Jews. And see, Roman Catholicism wants to turn the Sabbath onto Sunday. See, because they're replacement theology. Okay. You need to really get, wake up and understand the depth of what the devil has done to Catholicism and the Jesuit order. Okay. 
Romans 13, verse 9. You, you got a faith, you got a Bible. You got a Bible, don't you? Right? Okay? You think, yeah, you're you're a Christian, right? For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou, by the way, is singular, it means you. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Watch it. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now tell me something, Mr. NIV user, uh, you New American Standard user. Thou shalt not bear false witness wasn't in your um, Bible, was it? Was it? See, the Catholic removes the second commandment about the worshiping of idols because that's what they do. And in the New Testament, they remove that commandment, thou shalt not bear false witness because guess what? The Bibles bear false witness. Uh, you might have noticed that I refer to this as the scriptures and not a Bible. We need to really adhere to distinction, especially in these last days, brethren. And the church of the living God inaccurately referred to as Christians. Distinction. Because there are a lot of Christians out there in there. There are a lot of Bibles out there in there. But there's only one church of the living God. And these are the scriptures. Go to Psalm 119. <clears throat> Psalm 119. Psalm 119 is the longest psalm in the entirety of Scripture. And Psalm 119 just exalts and elevates the Word of God. Now see, the textual critic Jesuit trained scholars, cemetarian, will say it's referring to the spoken. Yea, hath God said. See, that's how that works. That's how that works. Okay? But in Psalm 119, there's so much we can read. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'd like to, but we're not going to. Um, verses 97 on to verse 112. We are going to read Mem and Nun in Psalm 119. Okay? Uh, that here, what is what is that? Okay. You see that? You see that right here? That's what I re I'm referring to. Okay. Not all authorized versions of the scriptures have that subheading. They ought to. But go to Mem and Nun is what we are going to read. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. You know the scriptures. You are wiser than the enemy. Because the author of the scriptures dwells within you. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way. See, again, our lives are to line up with the scripture. <clears throat> that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. Who has taught thee? The Lord, the Spirit of truth, who will guide you into all truth. 
And the Lord is that spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Yes, God will use a man to teach. Yes. But it's God who gives the increase, dear friend. Not some Jesuit. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, and understanding is to depart from evil. Job 28, 28, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. I hate Catholicism. I hate Roman Catholicism. I do not hate the Catholic person. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? I would hope that a Catholic could get saved. But as far as Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, the Roman Catholic Church, and all that she teaches, I hate it. I hate Roman Catholicism. See that? Guilty as charged. Because it's false. Therefore, I hate it. Thy word, none, now we're in 105 under us, uh, 112, okay. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Where's his word? It's right here, the authorized version of the scriptures. I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. Except I beseech thee, the free will offerings of my mouth. Roll that one around in your head for a little while, okay? O Lord, teach me thy judgments. You've, in brokenness and contrition, have called out upon the Lord. Lord, save me. See, it's not the prayer that saves you. It's the broken heart that comes to the physician to be healed, who has sorrow that it's your fault that he went to the cross. And someone who is broken and sorrowful over that is going to call upon the name of the Lord, going to call on Jesus, Lord, save me. He'll answer you. about the heart and unless it's broken and contrite you ain't saved it can be broken it could be contrite but you gotta have go to him on his terms you gotta go to him not sidestep him See. my soul is continually in my hand yet do I not forget thy law my hand talks about the dispensational uh, difference Today, the circumcision made without hands is here. That means that you are sealed until the day of redemption. God the Father dwells within you permanently if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. When this was written under the law, okay, the Holy Ghost and Lord is that spirit was not a permanent resident. He could come and go, come and go. Eternal security was not available in this time period. That's called dispensationalism, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Verse 110. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statute always, even unto the end. 
Um, look at verse 111. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever. This is our heritage as the church of the living God. Taking it to me forever. You, you're going to have to kill me rather than get this book out of my hands, boy. For they, the testimonies, are the rejoicing of my heart. The testimonies of the Lord. Scriptures are the rejoicing of my heart. How can you rejoice in something that isn't perfect? Riddle me that. Okay? Now, Psalm 119 Okay. We will be reading Ayan on to Zadi. What is, what, is, what is that? Uh, verses 121 on to verse 144. Come on. You come here, these aren't little things. Psalm 119, verse 121 under verse 144. I have done judgment and justice. Lead me not to mine oppressors. Be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. Mine eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. It bothers me. How Catholicism has tried to pervert the Word of God. With all their Bibles. It uh, chafes my buttocks, to put it to you bluntly. And anyone of the Church of the Living God, it ought to irritate you. And it does. If you're truly saved. <laughs> Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy. And teach me thy statutes. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know that I may know thy testimonies. He wants to know the scriptures so that you may know the Lord. You know the Lord through the scriptures, not just your experience. See, the Jesuit coadjutor hirelings in the buildings want to get rid of the scriptures. So that you go off of your feelings. Which can be manipulated by these twits. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. For they have made void thy law. Uh, yeah, they're really getting close to it, haven't they? Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold. Yea, above fine gold. What are these worth to you? Worth to me more than fine gold. <clears throat> Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. And again, and I hate every false way. Yes! Again! Here's something so you can look me in the eye. I hate Roman Catholicism. I hate her doctrines. I hate what she teaches. I hate Roman Catholicism. And I do hope some of you devil coadjutors out there would get out of that. Because I would really love to hear your testimony against your mother. Thy testimonies are wonderful. Therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. Think about what we've already looked at in the scriptures here, okay? I opened my mouth and panted, for I long for thy commandments. I know of a sister whose dying wish, before she went on to be with the Lord, all she wanted to do was read this book. That's all she wanted to do.
Look thou upon me, and be merciful unto me, as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. Make thy face to shine unto thy, upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. Rivers of waters run down mine eyes, because they keep not thy law. Does it, grieve, it grieves us, the church of the living God, that all this falsehood, all this evil is out there. But our time is coming to an end. Theirs is just beginning. But we ain't done yet, brethren. Don't you forget it. Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zeal hath consumed me, because mine enemies have forgotten thy words. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Think about that verse right there. You got John MacArthur who's been given permission to um, make better, or what it was, it tweak the New American Standard to come out with this thing called the Legacy Standard Bible, or whatever it is, LSB. LSD, <laughs> yeah, that's basically what it is. Um, no perfect standard. Guys like John MacArthur... They are their own standard. They are their own God. There is no, nothing perfect for them. The word of God is not pure unto them because if it were pure, why are they changing it or tweaking it to make it even better? I am small and despised, yet do I not forget thy precepts. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, yet thy commandments are my delights. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. Verses 6 and 7 in Psalm 12. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. Verses 6 and 7. Uh, 5, 6. 5 and 6, excuse me. Proverbs 30, verses 5 and 6. Every word of God is pure. Every word of God is pure. The Bibles are not the word of God. The word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures, is pure. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. And yet, the Bibles add too. And remove. Especially the book of Revelation, where there is an admonition to anyone who removes the, any of the words of the prophecy of this book. Okay? Catholics are really hip onto that. Even if that was, okay, just for that specific book in itself about the book of Revelation, um, the admonition within the scriptures to not mess with the scriptures is throughout the scriptures. But the most messed with book in all the Bibles. It's the book of Revelation. Yea, hath God said. And of course, go to John. John 17. And these are in red words. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word. It's truth. What's his word? The collection of everything? Thy word, singular? All 
all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Uh, that's in the book of 2 Timothy. Go read that sometime out of the scriptures. See, Catholicism wants to remove the foundation, which they cannot do. They cannot destroy the scriptures. But they can counterfeit it, copy it, imitate it, and do all kinds of things to get you out of the way. Satan has been allowed by our Lord Jesus Christ to rule this world for judgment. And he is ruling it through Catholicism and the Jesuit order. And how do you combat this? You get saved. And the spirit of truth, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that spirit, will guide you into all truth. He will guide you to the scriptures. Because Catholicism hates the scriptures, people. This to the Catholic is the most hated book on earth because it's God's book. And like I said, in the epistle dedicatory of the authorized version, it talks about popish persons. This book, the King James Version, the scriptures, is anti-Catholic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Why do you think they hate it? And because of all that the Jesuits have done. Now I'm going to read a little portion to you out of this, okay? <clears throat> This, I know I've covered this in another video, but for this video specifically, I'm going to read this again. Um, the red is what I'm going to be reading you. All the red stuff. Okay. Okay, let me see. Okay. Pause it and read it. Here's what the Jesuits have to say about the scriptures. My brethren, as to the Bible, be advised by me. For our greater good, let us avoid, let us carefully avoid this ground. If I may tell you openly what I think of this book. It is not at all for us. This is coming from a Jesuit priest. Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, knows full well that the authorized version of the scriptures is against them. But the other ones that come from them? No, 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 no. It's this one. It's this one. Those of you out there who are lost, you're, you know, you're a Christian, um, you got to consider why is this so hated? Let me tell you why. It is not all for us. It is against us. I do not at all wonder at the invincible obstinacy it engenders in all those who regard its verses as inspired. Yeah. You are aware that when once entered upon theological studies, we must of necessity make some acquaintance with the Bible. Some acquaintance. And then if you were to, uh, you know, if you were to ever get a hold of the Alberto testimony thing here, okay? Um, Jesuits train uh, how to sound like scripture believing um, church of the living God. They study their disp uh, the dispensations. They will study to how to look as if they truly believe the authorized version of the scriptures, as if they are truly of the church of the living God. That's what they do. And then they get all antsy when they get outed. Because they can confess something. whoop de do <clears throat> 
For myself, although in company with numerous fellow students, mere machines accustomed to confound the text and the commentary, as if they were one and the same thing, an illusion which, to confess the truth, is extremely useful to us. It was yet impossible for me, endowed as I was with some capacity for reflection, as proved by my presence here amongst the small number of the elect, it was impossible for me, I repeat, to be so absurd, absurdly credulous as not to distinguish the text from the commentary, but which its sense, but which its sense is almost always distorted. In the simplicity of youth, I fully expected, upon open, listen to this, upon opening the New Testament, to find there laid down, todeum literis, the authority of a superior chief in the church, meaning Pope Peter, and the worship of the Virgin, the Queen of Heaven, the source of all grace for mankind. I sought with the same eagerness for mass, purgatory, for relics, etc. You know, this, the round sun-shaped cookie, the flesh, okay? Purgatory, there is no purgatory, okay? Relics, idols. But in every page, I found my expectations disappointed. From every reflection that I made resulted doubt. At last, after having read, at least six times over, six times over, that little book which set all my calculations at naught, I was forced to acknowledge to myself that it actually sets forth, I was forced to acknowledge to myself that it actually sets forth a system of religion altogether different from that taught in the schools and thus all my ideas were thrown into confusion they know that the authorized version of the scriptures is against them the penetrating eye of my confessor perceived the agitation of my mind and I was consequently obliged to disclose to him my distress and difficulty. Ah, Reverend Father, I said to him, I expected to find in the New Testament each of our different dogmas fully developed and dwelt upon in accordance with the value and importance which we are accustomed to attribute to them. What is my surprise to find there is nothing at all like what we deem the most essential in our doctrines. And you know what's funny? You get an NIV. Okay? You get a Revised Standard Version. You get a Catholic Bible. Even their, their own Bibles teach contrary to what their catechisms teach. See, that's why they elevate tradition over the scripture. Get them from the scriptures and trust in a system of religion. Ah. Without allowing me to proceed any further, he inquired, have you communicated your thoughts to any of your fellow students? Did you say anything to these people about this? Because you can't let, like you just saw, they can't let these kinds of things be talked about. They can't let these kinds of things be talked about. Yeah. He said, no. No, replied I. I have suffered much, but alone. That is well, he said. Oh, and you know what, too? Let's also remember this, okay? Let's also remember this. Let me, let me get back there. 
okay? This right here, I'm going to read this to you again, which is in red, right here. Then the Bible, that serpent, which with head erect and eyes flashing fire, threatens us with its venom, whilst it trails along the ground, shall be changed again into a rod as soon as we, be, as soon as we are able to seize it. And what wounds will we not inflict with it upon these hardened pharaohs and their cunning magicians? What miracles will we not work by its means? Oh, then, mysterious rod, we will not again suffer thee to escape from our hands and fall to the earth. For you know but too well that for three centuries past, this cruel asp has left us no repose. You well know with with what folds it entwines us and with what fangs it gnaws us yeah 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 see see roman catholics know that this is against them and because of what is going on right now with the yea hath god said verse 8 in psalm 12 the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. The vilest men are exalted, huh? Such as scholars, There might have been a time where scholars were legitimate, but nowadays, all the cemetery schools, they're all infiltrated by Jesuits. What I just read you came from the Jesuits themselves. Catholics are not of the Church of the Living God. Catholics are not saved. Isaiah chapter 29, verses 13 and verse, on to verse 15. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 4. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. These hirelings in the church buildings that have given themselves over to the Vatican, the Jesuits, what their yea hath God said, their textual criticisms, reading Bibles, not the scriptures. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my flock and that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them. And will bring them again to their folds. And they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Again, think about the Dark Ages. And God used the Protestant Reformation 
to get the scriptures into the hands of the common man. And the New World Order is a return to the Dark Ages where they will go to and fro and will not be able to find the Word of God. The Word of God, the authorized version, will still be there in the time of Jacob's trouble. But they are uh, that fulfillment in Amos will be reached in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's getting there right now today. With all the Yeh hath God said. Let's see. As it says in Psalm 12, verse 8, the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. You take the scriptures away from people and give them Bibles. <laughs> Sorry for that. Yeah. Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. Oops. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 16 on to verse 19. Ezekiel 34, verses 16 on to verse 19. Let's read 15 on to verse 19. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong, and will feed them with judgment. The well-favored harlot, Mystery Babylon, is eventually going to be destroyed. He came onto his own and his own received him not. But this has fulfillment in the time of Jacob's trouble. I'm talking about the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the way. Which the Church of the Living God is not going to be here for. You're a Catholic, you're going to be here for it. Because you ain't saved. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the, ra between the rams and the he-goats. Seemeth, seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture? But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters. But ye must foul the residue with your feet. Foul the residue with her your feet. Waters in the book of Revelation, verse uh, chapter 17. Again, the people are likened unto waters, and the devil walketh to and fro in the earth. Okay, walking about as a as a roaring lion to seek people whom he may devour. Roman Catholicism has walked to and fro throughout the entire earth. Yeah. Yeah, as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. You know, if you've been defiled by Roman Catholicism, here, get the book that they hate. Get the authorized version of the scriptures. The King James scriptures are true. The only scriptures. Get this and read it. Ask the Lord to show you things. You'll come to believe it very quickly. Because it will condemn you. And show you that you ain't good. That you need to be saved of the Lord. And that you need to come to him on his terms. Broken and contrite. You're not going to find Roman Catholic doctrine in here. Except in the Apocrypha. Isn't that interesting? Like you read uh, Syriac or Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Yeah. 
Yeah, and yes, the 1611 did have the Apocrypha, sandwiched between the Testaments. And even King James himself said, I omit them because I am no papist. In the Apocrypha, you can find Catholic doctrine, especially in the book of Syriac, Ecclesiasticus. That's, that's where, and Apocrypha means hidden wisdom. The Jews never accepted the Apocrypha as authoritative uh, uh, inspired scripture. And remember, the Jews were the um, custodians of the Old Testament. Okay? Keep that in mind. This is against your system, Catholic. And you're putting trust in a religious system that is going to bring about that man of sin, the son of perdition, who after we, the church of the living God, is taken out of here, is going to cause you to take a mark. And once you take that mark, guess what? You're going to hell, no ifs, ands, or buts. And you have these Jesuit coadjutors who have infiltrated, making themselves sound as if they believe the authorized version of the scriptures, telling you just to believe, not rightly dividing the word of truth for the cause and purpose that in that time period, when you get left behind, you will take it and be damned to hell with them. Get out of Roman Catholicism. The Roman Catholic Church is Satan's church. She is a whore. She is a harlot. And if you adhere yourself to her statutes, if that is what you are trusting in, you are not saved. Do you understand that? Get the authorized version of the scriptures. Read it. See for yourself. The Jesuits themselves. I gave you proof. The Jesuits themselves. Even from one of themselves at one time. Alberto Rivera. They know. They know this is against them. See. This is what we have to deal with, brethren. Don't be afraid of the Catholics. Go at them. Hopefully a Catholic will repent and truly get saved and born again. Go back to Jeremiah now. Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5. Verse 25 under verse 31. Now, hold your place here and go back to Psalm uh, 12. Psalm 12 again. Verse 8. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 25 on to verse 31. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. You don't want to believe in a God that is just, righteous, and judges sin. And that you have to be coming to him on his terms. Broken of your self-righteousness. Realizing it's your fault that he went to the cross. Okay? But then you get these Catholics. These Jesuits who tell you it's not that bad. Just jump over it. You can be saved by what you do. By adhering to our system. For among my people are found wicked men. Wicked men, the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Those who are with the Jesuit order. Those who run all the organizations that are responsible for what is going on right outside your door. It's the Jesuits. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that set a snares. They set a trap. They catch men. As a cage is full of birds. 
so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great and waxen rich. Look at the papacy. Look at the papacy. You think, you, think, you think the Roman Catholic Church is poor? You're nuts. They are waxen fat. They shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause of the fatherless. Yet they prosper. And the judge of the needy do they not judge. Or, or, and the right of the needy do they not judge. Beg your pardon. Look at America. Shall I not visit for these things, said the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will you do? And what will ye, plural, excuse me, do in the end thereof? Because you like to have your ears itched and tickled, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, you sure do, don't you, boy? Isaiah 58. Isaiah chapter 58. Verses 1 on to verse 7. Cry aloud, Isaiah 58, verses 1 on to verse 7. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. This is for our instruction in righteousness, by the way. Preach the gospel out there, brethren. The doors aren't closed. Yeah, they're closing, but they ain't closed. Get out there. Don't worry what someone else is doing. What the Lord has called them. You worry about what he has called you to do. And get out there. Before the doors close. Think about the testimony that we are going to leave behind for these people. And those of you who are going to be left behind. You need to get your hands on the scriptures before it's too late. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. Right? As a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Just like they did in uh, Jeremiah chapter 43. Whatever the Lord tells you, we're going to do it. Don't go to Egypt. Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah 44. The Lord didn't say for you to say that to us. But Baruch, the son of Neriah, setteth thee on against us. See? They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and ye exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it, a fa is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and, to, and that ye break every yoke? How do you do that? Through the scriptures, proclaiming the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that by his blood, his blood, is the atonement for our sins. Come to him broken of your self-righteousness. It's your fault that, he's on, that he went to the cross and died. It was my fault. Believe on him for what he did for you because of what you did to him. 
Call out to him. May he save you. Is it not, verse 7, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked that thou cover him? And that, thy, that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. This is how I give. This is how I give back unto the church of the living God, our Lord. What our Lord gives us is just for what he gives us, for what is needful. That's it. Go to Mark chapter 7. We're almost done. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 13. Mark chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 13. Talking about the Pharisees. And remember, a Pharisee is someone who sets tradition over the scriptures. And a scribe is someone who perverts the scriptures and gives you a Bible. Mark chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 13. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, Ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. Catholics! <laughs> For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother. And whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. What does that mean? Uh, you using the excuse, well, it's tithe, it's tithe for the church. So what this tithe is supposed to be for the church, I can't give to you to help you, but it has to go to the church. And tithing is not a requirement for us today in this dispensation because God does not live in temples made with hands. Okay? And that's what Catholicism teaches. Okay? And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things ye do. That's Catholicism for you. And of course, let's remember Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Colossians chapter 2. Uh, actually... Let's read verses 6 on to verse 12 in Colossians chapter 2. Then we will be done. I wanted to read all of Matthew chapter 23, which is the lead up to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Not The church of the living God is not going to be here for that. You Christians will. The Jesuits and Catholics will. But those who are saved born again, converted of the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. Okay? Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 on to verse 12. Then we'll be done. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. And that doesn't mean that ye eat that blasphemous flesh cookie. Because remember, when a Catholic says to you, they receive Jesus. They're talking about they eat him. And he's in his, their gut. Not 
spiritually sealed as on in, uh, until the day of redemption. They receive him by eating him. Rooted, verse 7, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, the wisdom of men, and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the, of the world, and not after Christ. Catholic, Catholic, Catholic. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. What is the Godhead? Spirit, soul, and body. One God. Spirit, soul, and body. Not three divine persons that make one God. The Trinity is heresy. Okay? And ye are complete in him which is the head and all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. What does that mean? Sealed until the day of redemption. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit dwelling within you. That is the circumcision made without hands. Circumcision was of the flesh in the Old Testament, a seal for the Jews, okay? Circumcision is not required today, okay? It is not a requirement. You don't have to be circumcised and keep the law to be saved today. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ. Circumcision made without hands, meaning that Body and soul are now separate because of that circumcision, because of the seal. Where in the Old Testament, because God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, was a permanent resident, they could he could come and go, come and go. Okay? They were not eternally secure in the Old Testament. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, because sin has been relegated to what? The flesh. The sinful flesh. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And again, water baptism is not required for salvation. It is a public profession of an inner conversion, the circumcision made without hands. But see, remember like what it says in Psalm 12, verse 8. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Who are the vilest men? Roman Catholics, the Jesuit order. Ministers of Satan who appear as ministers of righteousness. Dear, dear, dear Catholic, you have your faith in your system. Your fake, your fake Jesus, the Pope. Actually, the black Pope, Arturo Sosa, the most powerful man on this earth. He's the one who runs it. He's the one who's in control of the whole world. You need to get out of that system. You need to get out and get saved. That the Lord saves you. How do you do that? Get the authorized version of the scriptures. That's what you do. This is still on the list of forbidden books. You can't, uh, to the Catholic, you can't read the scripture. Because 
they say it leads you into heresy. No, it leads you into freedom from them. The foundations are not destroyed. They're right here, the authorized version of the scriptures. Dear Catholic, there is a playlist on this channel that deals primarily with your system. This video will be added on to it. I'm going to put a link in this video where we will talk about what it is to be saved of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you consider these things. Because you look outside your door, you look outside your window, that is the result of Roman Catholicism of the Jesuit order. Go to the Lord and get saved before it is too late. It's going to be it for this video. A little long. Went over some familiar territory for many of you. Yes, but we cannot forget. Keep fighting until the Lord says no more. Lord willing, um, there'll be another video tomorrow. Uh, addressing uh, binding and loosing in heaven. That kind of thing. going to make a video specifically on that. Lord willing, that will come tomorrow. But um, thank you for, so much for watching this video if you do. Catholic, I don't tell you this because I hate you. I hate your system. I want to see you Get saved of the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. I still think about what, how great it would be if one of these devils were to betray their system and get out of Catholicism. Oh, what they, what, what they could do unto the whore. But that's going to be it for this video. We love you. We are praying for so many of you. We will see you in the next video.